So anyway, he claims he's the best <laughs> corner in the league, as right. we saw in that tweet to open the segment. Joey Porter Jr. of the Steelers entering year two of his career recently proclaimed he's the best cornerback in the league. So today's draft tucked into segment two of the show, not, you know, cramming it all in at the end. So we have a little more time to let this breathe. Today's draft. It's a pop-up draft, Whoa. which means there may be one later, which means I've possibly forgotten the rest of the outline. But at least for now, pop-up draft, best corners in the NFL go. Yeah. I, and, hey, there's some good ones out there right now. There there really is. And Jair Alexander, he he was one of those guys that I, I think, you know, two years ago, I might have said he's the best corner in football. Right now, I don't think I'm going to go there. Right. And right now, I know where you're going. I know where you're going. Well, I don't know if you do. I don't know if you know all the way. I'm going to go right off the bat here with Jalen Johnson in Chicago. Yeah, I am. I think that's the guy. That's the guy I look at to go. I think he's the best corner in football right now. I great ball skills, right? Ball gets around him, going to be intercepted. And then, you know, me, Mike, you know, I like I love the sauce gardeners of the world, but damn, you know, I'm just not if you're not playing man or there's certain routes that you don't have to worry about, right? Because you always play zone there. That I that don't look at you as the same way as a guy like this who's just like, hey, I'm right here, lockdown central, see you later. What's the rest of the defense? I don't know, but you're covered. I great. That's to me what a corner's all about. Jair Alexander is that, and he certainly was that when he wasn't hurt. But yeah, I'm gonna win this guy right here, Jalen Johnson. Yeah, and, you know, that's a good point. And maybe, maybe Bears fans that are freaked out about reports of Caleb Williams struggling in OTAs, maybe the explanation is he's throwing at Jalen Johnson. They got some maybe, good defense over there. Maybe it's that yeah. simple. Yeah. Uh, I, I will go Sauce Gardner, all pro, two straight years to start his career. But And there has been talk recently. I think it was just last week. I think so. Gardner talking about moving with – because he knows. He knows that's how the best are measured, traveling with the top receiver. Wherever that guy goes – I go and my job is to shut him down not do the old Richard Sherman thing no no disrespect intended but he had one side of the field I remember that Packers Seahawks game to start the 2014 season they right. just put Jordy Nelson everywhere that that Richard Sherman wasn't that's yeah it's, so yeah if you're not going to move with the best receiver they'll just put the best receiver where you're not exactly but he's still great he is there's no doubt he is great he really is I'd like to see him take more of that roll on, right? But yeah, doesn't travel, right? It's Seattle three a lot of the times. There's certain routes that he doesn't have to worry about, and that makes him look a little bit better, right? Some of these man-to-man corners would go, wait, I'd love not to have to cover the guy when he runs a shallow cross and runs across the formation, and I get to pass him off to somebody else, right? Where like, you know, again, Jalen Johnson, some of these other man-to-man corners of the world, they're going, wait, no, I, I have to cover that guy. Like, it, I'm responsible for him. And th- that's a different ball game, in, in my opinion, when it comes to that. All right. Maybe not his best year last year, right? Little bit of a down year, but I'm, I'm still taking this guy. I mean, if you give me three picks, I'm taking him. And that's Patrick Sertain. I'm definitely going there in Denver Broncos. It wasn't his best year last year. I know that. But I, I still look at the the body of work so far in his career. And, hey, he's another guy. Again, you, 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 Island, put him here. Oh, it's Devontae Adams, man-to-man. Boom, see you later. Go, so, uh, so I'm all about that, right? And I think here in another year in this, this defense with Vance Joseph and Sean Payton, I think we see a better Patrick Sertain this year. Um, I'll go him with my second pick. I I, uh, I agree. And, you know, every once in a while, there's trade chatter that pops up with him. I know. I don't know why. Yeah. I, I mean, I know why a team would want him, but I don't know why it lingers. I don't yeah. know why the Broncos I think he almost got traded the during the year last year, Mike. I, I I mean, I know he almost got traded last year. There yeah. was serious talk, certainly, out of Denver about moving him. They decided not to. But, yeah, I think the other part is they're probably going to have, you know, they're going to have to pay him like the top corner in football here probably soon, too. You know, I, I tried not to get too caught up in the whole Duran Bland pick sixes thing last year because that can be deceiving. At one point, they were talking about him for defensive player of the year. He ultimately was a first-team All-Pro, which I think was also fueled by the yeah. pick sixes and maybe not by the total performance. I'm going to go Trent McDuffie. Okay. He was the first-team All-Pro slot corner. I think that's one of the reasons why the Chiefs were willing to move on from Legereus Sneed. Definitely. Kind of an embarrassment of riches there. Got to allocate the cap dollars. You know, being the all pro slot corner, I mean, that I think that's a tougher handling the guy in the slot 
because you know you, you got a guy yes. on the outside there's only so many ways he can go right you get the guy in the slot who knows where the hell the guy's going to go who knows what the hell the guy's going to do i think it's even a bigger challenge from an overall skill set standpoint to be able to be in the middle of the field and get pulled drag taken anywhere and everywhere with so much space on either side and so much uncertainty as to what the receiver is going to do i i really do think it's a greater skill set when you have to do that versus being an outside corner. I, I I don't disagree with you there either, right? And again, that's where like the guys who match up, they go inside and do that stuff and they're inside, outside, they do it all. But yeah, you know, that that's almost a, another skill skill set in itself, right? And that's to me where, you know, I, I I love Trent McDuffie. Yeah, he can be on the outside and cover the big guys, but he's got the ability to cover the jitterbugs inside, let alone like Hey, if you're going to get into tackling and all that type of stuff too, Trent McDuffie is no doubt one of the best tackling corners in football, if not the best. I mean, he's that damn good. So I'm with you there. If you didn't take him, I was probably going to take him, uh, but that's a good pick by you uh, nonetheless. I, I do like that. Man, this this is where it gets hard. There's there's you know You sit here and you go, man, there's some good corners right now, right? I mean, Deron Bland is damn good, to your point. I mean, he's damn good. And again, a guy that he gets put on an island a lot that I like. I mean, we know Trayvon Diggs is damn good, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to give some love to some other guys that I think I, I'm not going to pick here, but I want to give some love to. Paulson Adebo of the New Orleans Saints, right? That's another guy that I'd go, he's next. He's going to get paid big. That's why they're talking about trading Marshawn Lattimore down there in New Orleans because Paulson Adebo is the guy now. He is their guy. So I want to give him some love. Denzel Ward, we talked to you know, him, AJ Terrell in Atlanta. Okay. But when it comes to my pick, I'm going to take Legereus Sneed right now. I'm going to take Legereus Sneed. I'm going to go right off the heels of what you just said, kind of about with Trent McDuffie, but say the same thing. The damn guy could go inside, outside, it doesn't matter. Line up, I got you. And, of course, he tackles, makes plays on the ball. We know that. And, damn, what was it? I mean, he didn't give up a – he played man-to-man and give up a touchdown until the, the divisional game against the Bills, right? So I'll go Legereus Sneed, let alone this great play that's you know, might have saved the year. Yeah, got the big contract from the Titans. There were concerns about yeah, the knee. He right. said the knee's fine. We'll find out this year and beyond. Okay, I'm stuck here. Yeah. I want to give some love to Derek Stingley Jr. because I think he's going to end up being great. Yeah. And I I love the whole Stingley family story. Sure. Dating back to, you know, uh, Daryl Stingley with uh, what happened there. And there was a great feature that we had on the Thanksgiving night game about the connection between Derek Stingley Sr. and John Madden and what John Madden and and John Madden's son and the connection between John Madden and Daryl Stingley even though he was the coach of the opposing team after the paralysis happened. Just a great story and a great player who I think is coming into his own with a great team. But I'll go Devin Witherspoon here. Your guy from last year. Yeah. He was the best corner. If Joey Porter Jr. is going to claim he's the best corner in football now, and I understand you have to have a high degree of confidence bordering on delusion to succeed in the NFL, Devin Witherspoon was the top corner last year from the rookie class. There were moments where after that Giants game, I thought this guy's going to be defensive rookie of the year. That's how good he was, and that's how good he can be. Shades of Rondé Barber, guy who can do it all. I think Mike McDonald is going to have a field day drawing up ways to get the most out of this guy and all the different things he can do, and I think he's going to flourish. I mean, McDonald got the job because he's a defensive guru, and if you're a defensive guru and you got a guy, you're like, holy shit, he can do everything. He's going to be doing everything, that's right. and he's going to be doing it well yeah, this year. That's right. Hey, listen, I think one big thing we hit on overall here with this type of thing here, and there's some damn good players like we talked about, right? I mean, Trayvon Diggs off injury, we're leaving him off here. I mean, he might scare me more than any DB in football if I had to throw a ball against him, right? But, uh, you know, he was hurt last year, all that. But one thing's apparent to me when I was kind of looking at this last night, and I'll say this because I've said this on my podcast a little bit, and you know this too. Like in the NFL right now, these some of these good offensive coordinators and offensive uh, teams, they're too good. 
You you can't play zone in big moments of football right now. That, to me, would be the problem with the 49ers and what happens at the end of the game. The Chiefs can go, no, we're going to play all these things and stop your run game, and you're just going to lock them down on a big third down here, and boom, McDuffie knocks it down on the blitz, right, at the end of the football. They can play man in big moments. Most of the defenses, the best defenses in football, can lock you down in big moments. The Cleveland Browns, I mean, they got three corners that we could have added into this draft, really. I mean, that's how damn good they are. And you talked about the Chiefs. They let Legereus Sneed go. Yeah, McDuffie's awesome, right? You look at PFF. Joshua Williams is one of the best press man-to-man corners in all of football, and I don't have to look at PFF. I know it. That They got him, the Jalen Watts. So the really good teams can go in big moments. Wait, we got all this to stop the stuff in the box, and we got some guys out here that can then cover some people. And I, I think that's a huge key to the NFL right now. We talk all the time about those receivers that are so good. They keep defensive coordinators up at night. Great corners let defensive coordinators yeah. sleep like babies. Right. right, right, exactly. Because you know we don't need two guys. We just put this guy on that guy, and that guy is neutralized, and yes. that's the value. And that's why I'm amazed that the market for corners is where it is. And maybe it's just there aren't enough great ones, but – if you truly can lock down the best receivers and the best receivers are going to be making 30 to 35 and the best corners are languishing around 20, yeah. something's got to give there. Yeah. Something's got to give. Yeah. I'm with you. I, I would think that's it's a good argument for soon. corners to be getting more money. If you right. can erase that guy who's making 35, why aren't you making a lot closer to 35? That's where Sertain right. and, and Sauce Gardner are going to come in here. Well, then hopefully Sauce they will can... be the one. Sauce yeah. will be the one who reset the market. You're I, right. I after this so. year. Right. Unless the Jets screw it up, which the Jets never screw anything up, so that's not a problem. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.